Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today for collection development analysis and promotions with book connections provided to you by Discus. Um, my name is Kim Davick. I'm joined by my colleague Jill Costi and today we are going to show you um, information about book connections and how to use it in when you're um, using it for collection development or analysis. I want to start, first of all, by just giving a little background about Book Connections. And that component is that it is, if you're not familiar, it is an ever-expanding collection of digital resources. So the goal is to help all readers equitably collect, connect to books, connect to authors and illustrators. We want to um, create that lifelong love of reading. It is for it is a public library interface of teaching books. So the same resources just organized differently and with your patrons and your staff in mind. Access to both teaching books and book connections is provided to all schools, colleges, public libraries, and residents through DISCUS, the, the service of the South Carolina State Library. And a little bit more than about who connect book connections is for. It's for your patrons. And most of you are well aware of the fact that your patrons will use your digital resources. They can use it to find resources and tools that help them become more engaged and empowered readers. But it's also for your library staff. So tools on the site that can help augment the work that you're already doing from either programming to collection management, homework help for your patrons and as you're supporting homeschool families and students. Your school districts also have access to the same database of resources through teaching books. So we'll show you how you can access that because it allows for easy collaboration. Your colleges and university librarians, faculty and staff who are working with students and studying to be public librarians also can use Book Connections. So then my little um, two minute advertisement, not even two minutes, it's about a minute. I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that Teaching Books itself was created over 20 years ago, um, designed to answer the question, what would happen if every reader could hear and learn directly from an author or illustrator at the moment that they're reading a book? The mission is to equitably give all readers insights and opportunities that deepen their understanding and joy of the books that they're reading. So every day we interview authors and illustrators in their homes and studios um, and provide those resources for you. And today we're gonna um, start our, our day with one of those resources. Jill, would you mind going to, um, switching over to the site? I will, and before I do that, do we wanna share the survey and the- Oh keyword? yeah, let's do that. Let's absolutely do that. Thank you so much. So there is a survey that really helps discuss, be able to provide resources. So please go ahead and just grab that um, QR code. There's also a link that will pop in the chat window um, so that you have it ready. If it's helpful for you to do it a little bit as you go along or just have it available and open it, um, we'll, we'll share it again at the end of the session too. But we wanna just make sure that you see that survey twice. Thank you so much, Joe. Yes. Okay, and we'll get that. Let's see if I can copy that right now. I'll grab it from my documents um, okay. for the end to make sure we get that in the chat, but for yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. We'll skip one over here to book connections and let me make sure my share is working for where we're going to go here. I'll just grab the survey while you're doing that. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's just double team it. All right. So we're going to share book connections and wait for him to pop that survey in the chat for you all. It was, oh, there we go. There you go. Great. And now, Jill, if you wouldn't mind searching for a title for me. So we can use the magnifier on the far right-hand side to look for a specific title that we're interested in looking at. And I want to pull up um, an early, title Room for Everyone. It's Poetry Month, so let's go ahead and just use a poetry resource. If we open that up, we will see that we have um, some touts at the top of the page. So this is what a 
uh, page on uh, teaching both teaching books and book connections look like. You'll see um, resources listed at the top. We have a meet the author recording, which we're going to listen to in just a little minute. Um, there's a video book reading and we have a name pronunciation with the author. Sometimes we'll have it with the author, with the illustrator, but a great, uh, those are great tools. So let's go ahead and just listen to a little bit of the Meath author recording. Let me know if the sound's not coming through, but it should okay. be, mm -hmm. everything should be ready to go. Hi, my name is Naz Khan and I am the author of Room for Everyone. This picture book is illustrated by Merce Lopez. I was inspired to write the book when I was visiting Zanzibar, which is an archipelago of islands and a part of the country of Tanzania. I was living and working in Kenya, a country in East Africa, and had the opportunity to visit Zanzibar, and I loved it. The first time I went, I took a dollar dollar from Stone Town to Nungui Beach, just like the characters in my book. And just like in the book, it was getting really crowded. But what I loved is that everyone had a ton of fun. We were really giggling and wiggling in the Dala Dala, and that's what inspired the story. The process of creating a book was really exciting, but thank also a little yeah. What I love about this is we know that this resource um, to listen to the entire recording will be just about three and a half minutes. And so it gives us a sense of if we're wanting to share that with our patrons at the beginning of a story time, or we know how long that will be, but something that we can use and share. And sharing is available on every um, page. So if the goal here is to easily give our resources out, do we, we want to provide access that is seamless and does it have any barriers? So that sharing that page will give your the recipient's immediate access. They won't have to sign in. They won't have to know about book connections at all. You're just giving them something. Okay. Um, and that is a great lead in to, uh, you notice that up in the upper left-hand corner, we see Welcome Jill. So when you come to book connections, you are going, there are many different kinds of access for you because you have a statewide license. So when you're out and about in the community and you go into Book Connections, you may see Welcome South Carolina resident. And then you can just sign in with your work email, you're geo-authenticated, you can get right in, okay? You also might have, your library might've done the setup form or your university might've done the setup form. And so that it would, if Jill goes back to the homepage, we would be able to see then um, right now, we're welcomed at the uppermost level of the state library, but you may see your public library there or you, your university there, or if we have any teachers or um, school librarians, you might see your school there. And so that is just depending on your access. And so we're going to share a link in a bit about making sure that you're set up as well, because it's key to make sure that everybody feels welcomed and understands that this is for them. They're not in the wrong place they're able to use all these resources. The second thing though, is you'll notice that Jill is signed in in that upper left-hand corner, we see welcome Jill. So this is available to you as a library professional. We have um, anonymous access for our students under our, and our readers under age 18. So they would always just see welcome South Carolina resident or welcome your library or welcome your um, well, university. It would be, they're all adults. So they get to see the adult access, but that's the difference. It allows you then to work on this collection development tool that we're gonna be looking at today and look at the analysis tools. So we're all gonna wanna make sure that we're signed in as professionals. And if you're following along with us under that toggle menu, Jill's already signed in, but there would be a little um, underneath help and support, there would be a, do you want to go ahead and show them, Jill? Yeah, show them. Okay. I so she'll sign him. back out. You'll see how that changed to welcome discus up at the top. And now she'll above sign out. You'll see professional login. And that's where you can sign in as an adult, um, either, you know, and even your, your families at home, your parents that come in, they can sign in as a professional, as an adult to get in, to maybe save lists of um, titles that they want their their child to read or just to promote anyway, they can also sign in that way. And we'll sign in. 
and then we're logged back in and now we can use the same resources, but we have more tools available to us as an adult. Okay, great. If you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to pop them in the chat and we'll try to answer those for you too. One thing that we wanna show you is the analysis tool, both your to analyze lists, to analyze um, titles that you might be pulling together for a display, for story time any of the different ways that you're sharing titles with your readers. And so we're going to use some of the, the lists that we have on Book Connections right now to highlight that tool. And if we go <clears throat> to the toggle menu and open that up, you'll see a section called your reading list. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if we open that up, you will always see uh, um, state lists. <clears throat> under South Carolina list. So our content team of professional librarians is on the move. So every time a list is updated, they get the, the current resources here. You'll also see <clears throat> on the left-hand side, if you're signed in as your public library, maybe you're gonna have an author visit, you can create your, your own list working with us to have those located in that left-hand side. The bottom right-hand side, or bottoms, Portion, portion is your custom list. Those are only available for you to see when you are signed in. So there are things that maybe you're, you're in preparation for, you're thinking about sharing with others. You can still share them outside of just you, but they're, they only show up on your account. So let's look, you saw where the state lists are. Let's just open up one of them. <clears throat> let's open up the picture book. Yeah, let's open up that one. And you'll see then that there are 20 titles for this 23-24 Picture Book Award for K2, and it has um, 200, over 200 resources. And so the resources that are available, you can use the filtering tools on the left-hand side to narrow in by a genre, or um, probably the publication year is gonna be really current, but that's helpful for some other lists. And then maybe you want to hone in on a cultural experience, or you might want to hone in on um, a resource type. So at the bottom, maybe you're wanting to see all of the titles that have a trailer or things like that. You can, you can do that. So that's a way that you can see that there are state lists. If you also go back, <clears throat> you can search um, for, we also have national awards. And so if you go and you want to browse and you scroll down a little bit, or you can use the left nav, either way, we all get used to what we get used to. <laughs> we can look at awards and distinctions and you will see both lists and um, awards and distinctions. And you will see on the, the top row, the right-hand side, we have compiled a list of recent award winners and honorees. So we can take a look at this list. Let's, let's do the analysis of this list real quick, Joe. So here we have um, 1,878 titles that are uh, recent award winners. And there are just a few resources, over 22,000 for that. Any list will have and an, a list analysis report. And it will look like the collection analysis report that we're going to, that we're going to look at later. Mm -hmm. So if we open that list up, list analysis award, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll go ahead and open up the report. Yes. I, I know I is stalling, <laughs> but I realized I said the wrong thing and I might have been confusing. <laughs> it's thinking. It's a, right. such a big list. I chose a, a large list, so that's <laughs> All right, so with those 1,800, almost 1,900 titles, we can see that there are um, beautiful graphics and we have an at-a-glance view. We have 19 genres represented, 19 cultural experiences represented. We can see the, dip, uh, the breakout of fiction, nonfiction. We can see how many are diverse, how many are graphic, all sorts of just quick at-a-glance concepts. If we scroll down a little bit, our data is displayed beautifully in graphics. So that fiction, nonfiction, we can see Lexile, we can see recency, all sorts of um, great. And of course, we're gonna see these are recent books or recent award winners. We uh, can 
click into any of those. And Jill, thank you for just scrolling on down um, to see. We see the cultural experiences represented. All of this, all of these tools are um, designed to help you take a look at what the data shows about the list that you're looking at. So if this were a display, obviously you couldn't put all those titles out, but maybe you'd have a group of them and maybe you, then you'd share that with others. At the very bottom of this report is another helpful tool that tells you what isn't included. And so in this, where is it? Maybe we've included everything. It's not here. It might be, I wonder, because I it's definitely on another one I was looking at today, and it looks like it may not be on this one. So we've included like all these. <laughs> that's yeah. spectacular. So in, in this instance, hallelujah, right? It's right here. Yeah, Everything's yeah. included. Um, but let's go ahead while we're here, Jill, and show them how they can click into um any of those bars. So inst for instance, if you're wondering. Um, what are the 2023 titles on this list? You can right click in there, open that up in a new in a new window, and you can see what those are. If you're wondering what certain um, cultural areas are that are listed, you can right click in. If I right click in, I can open it in a new tab, and that way I don't end up losing where I was. But it's really helpful to be able to see all those different components. I think it automatically opens in a new tab when we click on one of the bars, which I is nice. Love that. Thank you. That's good for me to know. I'm so used to making sure that's we didn't have that tool before. Um, so here you've got these lists. So maybe you've created a display, you're promoting certain ones for book clubs. You can share these resources as well. So at the very top on the left hand side, um, so we can. Do we want to go, maybe we should show them. Let's go to a different, let's just go to one of the South Carolina lists or any yeah. list, it doesn't matter. Let's just, let's just do a quick little search for a list. Maybe if I'm going to just type in STEM, let's see what comes up for us. Well, we're going to need that soon anyway. So that's great. <laughs> let's see if we go to our best STEM books. Great. And then we can show how to share here. Yeah, let's share there. And so here you can create bookmarks, you can create um, flyers, anything that's gonna be helpful for you to promote those resources. Thank you, Joe, that's really helpful. The um, digital platforms too, pro you can share on Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's okay, I was just gonna, those, I was just gonna say it. You can promote on Facebook or Twitter and those are just um, formatted and ready to go. Mm -hmm. I, think this is a perfect place to be because we were in best STEM books. So let's just go ahead now. Um, maybe we want to promote STEM books for a story time or a display or a book group. So let's go ahead and do that search again or go backwards so that I can see the other choices. There you go. No, it took us back. I'll do a search again. Okay. And so what we want to see is the best STEAM books 2017 to 2021. So let's, yep, let's choose that award and open that up. And now we have 174 titles with all those beautiful resources. And let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. I would like to see Lady. There she is. There it is. There she is. <laughs> um, and so would you mind, let's just play a little bit of that video book trailer. So here we have 24 resources for this title. And we didn't scroll down on this title on this title page before to see that there were original resources about the author, author interviews, and all of these will open up um, to see. But let's go ahead and take a look at the video book trailer and play a little bit of that. At nine years old, Eugenie Clark developed an unexpected passion for sharks after a visit to the Battery Park Aquarium in New York City. 
the time, sharks were seen as mindless killing machines. But Eugenie knew better and set out to prove it. Would you mind go ahead and choosing the share this page? So now we're on a particular resource and you'll notice under the set sharing rules. So the first thing I want to say is what a great way to build excitement for this title. If you're going to share it in a, maybe you're going to share it for story time. You could send home something on social media or just promote it this using this resource just to build excitement and interest. And on the section where it says set sharing rules, if you want to share it with full site exploration, so the search bar would be at the top, all the other components are at the top and the links to things like the um, puzzle and all those things would be available. You can just leave that radio button how it is. But if you'd like to choose share this resource only, like if you're going to create a shelf talker or you, and you, or you want to, you're giving it to um, your youngest patrons, maybe you just want to keep them focused in on this one resource. It changes the link. It changes the share talker or the shelf talker. It changes all of the components so that what you'll end up getting, and Jill's going to show us in a tab, you will get this resource again. No one signs in, but you'll notice that all of the other um, links are not are not here anymore. You can still select a language from the upper right if you want to translate it, um, not the text, not the actual speaking, but the text of it. If that's key, you can do that. But this will just be really focused for your patrons. So I love that. What I love is that you have this just ready to go. And let's go ahead and go back to that, um, that list. Let me see if I can back myself up to it. Um, nope, still in Strike Lady, now back. There list. we are. So again, you have, you can <laughs> share this list and that the recipients of that sharing option would have access to the 100 with, for the resources for the 174 titles. So your sharing tool allows you to share a resource, all the resources for a title, all of the resources for a list. And so, you know, you have the, you have permission to share anything on our site. I know that's often a question that we get in the chat window about sharing and permissions. Okay. If you have any questions at that, about any of this, just let us know. I love too that you can take a look at this list. It gives you the data, the analysis for this list, gives you the data so you know for this um, story time series, I use these titles, this is my data. When I'm going to go and create my next story time list of what I'm going to use for the next three months, I can create that again and really hone in maybe on another cultural series of cultural areas or um, content areas, whatever you're thinking you want to look at. The data helps guide us. Okay. All right. We're going to move into looking at this list analysis a little more deeply and thinking about how you can use this for collection analysis as well and how to create your own lists or upload lists you already have from um, the resources you're using. And before I do that, I just want to pause just to see if anybody's got any questions or wants us to repeat or remind you of anything that we've just covered. Just take a moment for that in case there's anybody. And don't hesitate. Like, you know, you might think of something while Jill is sharing this next section. I am poised to jump right in and answer yes. those questions. Any questions you have, please go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, okay, so let's think about how we can use our list analysis and collection analysis and create your own lists or work with lists you've got. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate a few ways that we can use this tool. If you've got book connections open and your own list that you want to work with, feel free to follow along um, as I go. But I'm going to show you how we, we can create a list from scratch. And so from here, I'm going to actually go to my toggle menu and I'm going to go to your reading lists. 
we were here earlier where we saw those state lists and a custom reading list that I've already created. But we can create a new list right here. And then we have a number of ways to create that list. So over here, we have a quick add by title. So I can search by keyword, say I look up honeybee, and here it pulls up a bunch of texts for me with honeybee. And I'm just gonna click on those and they quickly pop right into the um, list creator tool there. And I can clear my search and I can do a number of other ways to add um, titles to a list. I can paste titles and authors. I can paste a list of ISBNs. And I can upload a CSV file, which I'm going to show you in a moment. We can also import any list that already exists on Book Connections. Then you can adapt that however you want. We also have the scanner tool here. And I'm not super great at showing how this works. <laughs> but um, Kim, is there anything you want to add about how, how that works for our librarians? Right now, you have the, um, the camera tool. So you if you've got a device with a camera, you can like your phone, you can scan that way. If you want to use your um library scanner you um, just put your cursor in the in the window yep and then you scan the isbn and it will pull up a title right away too so it allows you to go through and just beep 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 right and add those in with ease so it's another way to quickly add thank you kim mm -hmm. and okay so i'm going to upload a csv file and i'm actually going to remove our honeybees <laughs> um, we're going to upload a file here, and it gives you a little information on, on um, how to format your CSV file to make sure that it's that it uploads correctly into our site. We're going to choose a file, I'm going to pull in my sample collection, and we're going to import. So it tells me that 148 titles matched. Sometimes, if we don't have a matching title, if you've got trade books, for example, uh, the, the, is trade book the word that I want? Um, there's some, sometimes we don't have exact matches um, depending on the kind of uh, text you're bringing in, but it will tell you here. We're going we should to have pre-K through 12th grade trade books or those that are uh, like used in a school setting, even if they're adult titles. Um, what we won't sometimes have are nonfiction series titles. Sometimes those will not be included. So once that list comes in, it populates for me here. And I can save my list. We need to add a name to it. So we're just going to say sample list. And if I want to, I can create a description for it. If you're working on displays um, or if thematic displays or summer reading, you can put a description there just so that that is all clear. We're going to save again and we're going to go view it. Go ahead, view it. There we go. So when it shows up like this, it looks just like the other list that we were looking at that already existed on our site. And so you can share it here. Um, you can embed it on a website. Um, you can edit it um, or duplicate it. And I love to highlight this, too, that you can add a note about any of these things. And so if you know you've got a meet the author recording that you want to use for introducing something to your book club um, or for story time, we can add a note there to um, remind ourselves that we have that particular resource we like to use. And we're going to look at our list analysis report again. And so we looked at this with that larger award winner list, but for this one, we've got again around 140 something titles that we're looking at. And we're just going to scroll on down and see what we've got here. It tells us this breakdown of fiction versus nonfiction. We see that the number of diverse books or percentage of diverse books and graphics. We get that reading level information. And we're going to keep scrolling. And again, we've got that recency. And as Kim mentioned earlier, on any of these, we can click on that and it will show us in a new tab <laughs> what the titles are from that particular bar section that you clicked on. We're going to keep on scrolling. The cultural experience gives us a sense of well, what are we looking for in collections that we're building for our patrons? Does this, is anything in here surprising to you? Is anything in here reflective of what you know you want for your group? So it gives you this nice, quick, at a glance look of um, what you might want to prioritize or shift around if you um, want to build and move these lists or move the titles on these lists. We're going to scroll, keep on going down. So we see this one's really heavy on our realistic fiction, more than half our list. 
gives us our curricular areas. And then here, Kim was mentioning this earlier, hey. our award list was uh, so diverse that didn't have anything that was not included. But here we see a few things that are not included on our sample list. So we've got Pacific and Islander and Oceana cultural experience. And then we have a number of genres that are not on this list either. So if I wanna make sure that I'm adding these titles to my list, then I can go over here to Pacific Islander and that opens up for me in a new tab. And this brings up all of the texts that are tagged with our Pacific Islander cultural experience. And so if I'm thinking about the list that I've created, say I'm working with a middle grade fiction um, display, I can go to my grade level here and go to my four to eight area. I can look at my genre, if there's a particular genre I wanna include in here, kind of play around with that and use those filters to get the text to narrow in on the text that I really want. And we know we're in our um, Pacific Islander collection. And so let's say we're gonna add um, a text to, let's say we wanna add a couple of texts to our list. And for this, we can just click on any of these plus signs, or we can add multiple titles if I wanna just bring in a whole bunch of these texts. So if we're gonna create and add to a reading list, I can create a new list. If there are texts that I know are not in my collection and I wanna create a list for purchasing, I can create a new list and add my titles to that, or I can merge it with the list that already exists. So I'm gonna add that to my sample list. And now I'm gonna go view my list again. And I'm gonna run my list analysis report one more time. And now I'm gonna scroll a little quickly here. We're scrolling on down to our not included, which shows us now we've got our Pacific Islander taken care of there. And then again, you can repeat that process with any of these genres if you wish to diversify further. And with these lists, it, uh, the, the, or with the list analysis, you it gives you a chance to really reflect on what you know your patrons might need um, or what you want to offer them. And as we showed earlier, I'm going to scroll on up again. We can share this list analysis report. You can share that with colleagues, um, or we can download that spreadsheet and then you can save it um, that way. And I'm gonna talk now about collection reports. Right now, this is a list analysis report that I have pulled up from um, looking at my custom reading list that I imported with my CSV file. But if I want to bring that into my collection analysis toolkit, which will allow me to compare multiple lists and also create and um, assess my list against a, need, a needs assessment, then I'm going to do something a little different now. So it's not going to save, just looking at a list analysis report is not going to save under my account for me. Um, but I can save it by adding it to a list analysis report. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go actually back to my list. So I'm back here, that's my list analysis report. I'm gonna go back to my custom list. <clears throat> we'll go into our sample list again. And now you'll see here, it allows me to add to a list analysis report. So that's a little different from just clicking on the list analysis report and seeing it. Now I can actually save it to my collection um, analysis reports. I'm gonna click on this and I can create a new report and I'm going to import that. And now it's going to show up for me in my collection reports. You're going to find that in this three line toggle menu right now, because I've just created it, it's not showing up for me immediately. So I'm going to refresh. And now in my toggle menu, I've got collection analysis reports as an option. And then we can also Actually, I'm not, oh, it's taking me right there. <laughs> so I've gone to my collection of analysis reports and I'm gonna show you again, click on that, here I am. So now here is my sample list that I have added to my collection analysis report. And any, any um, CSV file that you upload in your lists um, to create a custom list, you can do with that merge I just showed you, but you can also import titles for a list um, or for a collection analysis report that same way, just in here instead. So in that collection analysis report option, we've got that same way of pasting lists, 
pasting titles and authors or uploading a CSV file. So if you've got a big collection that you wanna look at, you can upload that here, but we recommend starting smaller, kind of chunking your bigger collections as you get used to this tool and think about what you really wanna highlight for your patrons. And so let's think about how we wanna bring our patrons into our analysis here. And we can complete, um, complete a needs assessment. <clears throat> and so from here, let's say we're analyzing, gives you a lot of options here, but we're gonna go to middle grade fiction. We're just gonna go, we're just gonna call it middle grade fiction. And then it asks you some questions about how diverse you think it is and how diverse you would like it to be. We then ask you some questions about your community needs. So what percentage is ideal for fiction to nonfiction? I'm gonna say 80 to 100% because I'm trying to do middle grade fiction here. We can do time frame. So we'll do past three full years, to keep it more recent. And what percentage would we like to focus on cultural, diverse cultural experiences? We'll say 61 to 80%. Then it allows you to select the categories that you really wanna make sure are highlighted. So again, reflecting what you know of your community and what you um, think their needs are. And then it does the same with genre. And so you can select whatever genres you really wanna make sure you're highlighting for your patrons. And it asks you about your reading levels. We'll do four to five and six to eight. Now I've got my needs assessment. So what I can do is I can actually just compare my sample list and my needs assessment. And it gives me a sense of, I've said that I really wanted adventure, fairy tales, and realistic fiction. What I've got are realistic fiction, science fiction, and graphic novel. So I know what I might want to adjust as I work with this list that I've got in here. Same with our cultural experiences here. So we've got African-American, I want more Asian-American, I want more women and girls. And so I would know then what I wanted to adjust based on, again, what already exists in my list. And again, we've got other ways of comparing um, the data that's in the list versus what we wanna add. I'm gonna go back to our collection analysis reports and quickly show you how we might adjust our sample list and then bring in and compare again. And then we'll have some time for Q&A. I'm gonna to go to my sample list again. And now I saw that I wanted more Asian American in my list. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down to my cultural experience details here. And I'm gonna click on Asian American. And this shows me all the Asian American titles in my list. And I can actually invert here. And now I can see all of the titles that are not in my list. And if I'm looking for middle grade, I'm gonna to go to my grade level of four to eight. And that brings me to a number of additional books that are not on my list yet that I can add. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add multiple titles to a reading list. And I'm just gonna select a handful of these and we're gonna to add to a list. And I'm gonna select my sample list and add. And then go view. And let's see, is that created my, my additional version that I want? No, it didn't do what I wanted to do. <laughs> Kim, I'm trying to show how when we add a new title to a list, we can create an additional list and it will say sample list version next. So go on down to your sample list again. This we've been updating this and trying to make it as easy as possible. So go ahead and go down to the bottom. Um, generally, what we've done is added this to um, what hasn't been included. So Jill, you did it exact correct way. If you wanted to look at something that wasn't included, you can go in there and then create that new list, and then it will, and then you can include it in. One thing that um, you can do now is if you're back on book connections, you just go back to the book connections site and you go to the Asian, uh, if we, you said Asian American. So if we mm -hmm. browse and we look at a collection, and you do the four eight again, just, mm -hmm. yeah, let's just do four eight again. And let's just choose, um, add multiple, let's just choose the first three and add those titles to a list. We're adding it to our sample list. Mm -hmm. Enter. And no, sorry, so now yeah. some of them, oh, do we already have them all? There yeah, we go. Yeah, I think I must have added them. Okay. Um, um, so just 
what happens is you you create that new list. Um, so let's just not add it to a list. Let's create, um, let's choose just three titles, three other okay. titles. I'm just going to grab a handful of these and create a new list. Well, let's create a new list. Yep. Oh, not that. There we go. Sample two or something. Add to list and now view it. And on the left hand side, then we should be able to see um, add list to list analysis report. Now we can add it to our sample now list. Now we can add it to our sample list. And when we import it, it will go in, it will be, now. There. and now when we return, yeah, so now it's another version. So if we return to our reports now, we should see that we have another list. So we can okay. compare those. Is that what you wanted to do now? Compare that those? is what I wanted to do. And it's saying version four, I think, because I was playing around with sample lists <laughs> earlier today. It will say the version two for you when you've created a second one like that. Um, thank you, Kim. I'm sorry for... No, that's okay. I think the thing about it is that some of these are new. At first, we couldn't do it this way. And we keep improving based on your feedback. So we love hearing when you're using these tools, what you notice. And if there's something that you think, hmm, I really wish X, Y, or Z, I put our emails in. We're always happy to hear your suggestions as well. So great. Yeah. And um, I mentioned earlier, you can compare. And so here you can compare your, your new list with your needs assessment or all three together and think about what you've got across the board there. I want to touch on where you can find more information for help. And we go back to our book connections page here. Kim, remind me where I'll find help on book connections. It's in the footer. In the footer. We scroll on down and we've got help and support here. Any questions that you have, you can always contact us, but we also have a number of video tutorials that we like to highlight for you. So you can um, follow along on, um, or you can get refreshers on creating that professional login. We've got two minute takeaways where you can learn more about how to use book connections in a variety of ways. And we also have a webinar archive to explore and then our contact us. And so you can also comment in here with any questions that you have or suggestions you have. And I'm going to go back to our book connections here. And I see we've got some um, information in our chat from Kim with that survey again. And we'll be back um, in so that I'm people can share see that, that slide one more time Perfect. and then we can answer any questions you might have. A quick reminder too, and I'm gonna put also in the chat about the setup form uh, that training is provided. So it's already included as part of your license. So if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to us or ask us to provide a demo for your, your library staff on anything that is helpful. Um, so if we go to either, let's go to book connections. You don't have to do this, Jill, I'm just talking to myself. It's a habit I have, um, connections.org backslash S C setup. And so that will get you to a form that allows your library to get set up on book connections with the technologies that your, your staff and your patrons use. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you. Um, we're so appreciative of the opportunity and look forward to connecting with you again. We'll go ahead and stop the recording and then um, we'll ask if there are any questions that you have.